Lesson 13 is linear inequalities in one variable, which that just means, so inequalities are kind of like equations, um, but instead of having an equal sign, they have what's called an inequality symbol, which is like less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then in one variable, it just means that they only have one variable as opposed to like x and a y. So before we get started, just a reminder up at the top, this is definitely something I would write down on like a sticky note or something that you can kind of keep in front of you as you work. So when both sides of an inequality are multiplied or divided by a negative number, the inequality symbol changes direction. So it like flips over and we'll talk about what that means a little bit more with the first example. So example one is, this is read as three minus two times x minus seven is greater than five. Talk more about like the inequality symbols in 13.2, but that would be like this side is greater than this side. The like pointed goes to the smaller side and the open like open alligator mouth goes to the bigger side. Okay, so um, there are a couple different ways to solve this. The workbook shows two different ways. I'm going to show just one just to keep the video a little bit shorter. But if you're interested in the second one, you can read it in the workbook. So when we're solving, um, we have the same goal as solving an equation where we are trying to get x by itself. So to do that, before I start canceling things out around x, I want to simplify the side of the inequality. So this like negative two in front of the parentheses means that it's being multiplied by everything inside. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute it. That's what it means what, like distribute is like to multiply the number in front of the parentheses by the numbers inside or terms inside. So I'm going to bring down the three and then I have to be careful because like this negative belongs with the two. So when I distribute it, I have to do it both times. So I would do negative two times X, which is negative two X. And then I would do negative two times a negative seven. So remember a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative two times negative seven would be positive 14. And then I bring down the inequality. So it's greater than five. And then after that, we want to check for like terms, which are terms that the same variable to the same power. The three and the 14, those are called constants. They don't have a variable, but they are like terms. So we can add them together. So if we do three plus 14, that's 17. So I'll bring those two together as 17, bring down the minus or the negative 2x, and then is greater than five. I have no more like terms over here, so that means that the left side of the equation is simplified. So now my goal is to move everything away from the x. So I have a negative 2 that's being multiplied by it, and the 17 over there. Usually we get rid of the multiplication last, not always, but most of the time. So I want to try to figure out a way to get rid of the 17. This is a point in problems like this where it's really easy to make a mistake because you see this like minus sign so a lot of times people see the minus like around 17 they want to add 17 to cancel it out but this 17 is positive because there's no symbol in front of it if it was a negative 17 there'd be a negative symbol so if it's a positive 17 i get rid of a positive 17 by subtracting so i would do minus 17 and then 17 minus 17 is zero so that cancels it out but if I subtract 17 from the like left side of the inequality symbol, I also have to subtract it from the right side, so right here. And then I have to make sure I bring down the negative 2x, like the whole thing, bring down my inequality symbol. And then next, subtract 5 minus 17 is negative 12. And then our goal is to get x by itself. Right now we have a negative 2 that's being multiplied by the x, so to undo multiplication, I would have to divide by negative 2. Same thing, if I divide on the left side of the inequality, I have to divide on the right side also. So negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1, so it's become a 1x. But before we finish the problem, this situation, like dividing both sides by a negative, is exactly what we were talking about like in this reminder. So in the reminder, it was multiplied or divided. We're dividing, so I'm just going to focus on that. So if both sides 
divided by a negative number, then the inequality symbol changes direction. So that means it like changes the way that it's pointing. So this inequality symbol, it was pointing to the right, and now it's going to point to the left instead. And that happens anytime we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. So it switches sides, and then now I can do um, negative 12 divided by negative 2 is positive 6. So my answer would be x is less than 6. So this is the only time where it would like change. So if any like, sorry, I'm not phrasing that right. So if we multiply or divide by a negative, that's the only case, but you do have to look for that in your problems. So if ask yourself, like if at any point in your problem you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to change the way that the inequality symbol is pointing. It doesn't apply for addition or subtraction, though, just multiplication or division. So this is x is less than 6 because the like point goes to the smaller number, the one that's less than. Okay, so example 2, um, Amy bought 8 cans of soup and spent another $15 on groceries. Her total was at least $39. Write and solve an inequality that represents this situation. So let's pull out like important information before we jump straight into the inequality. So um, she bought eight cans of soup and then she spent another $15 on groceries. Her total was 39 or at least $39. That word at least is really important too. So um, if she bought eight cans of soup, but we don't know how much soup cost, we should use that as one of our, or as our variable. So for cans of soup, I'm going to use, you can use S or C. I don't like using S because sometimes they look like fives. So C is going to represent cans of soup. So she bought eight of them. And that's like the cost of it. I'm going to add that whole thing. So we'll use C as the cost of a can of soup. Okay, there we go. I was trying to jump the gun a little bit. Okay, so when we're writing our inequality, she buys eight cans of soup. We don't know how much they cost, so it'd just be eight times C. So, like, if they were five dollars, she would be paying eight times five for all of her soups. And then she spends another fifteen dollars, just in general, not like fifteen per something. So we would just add fifteen dollars to that. And then her total was at least $39. So sometimes I think the hardest thing about inequalities is when we have to write them and decide what the inequality symbol should be. So it's go there's going to be an inequality symbol right here that represents at least, and then it's going to be $39. So we have to think about what at least means. Does at least mean that she's going to spend less than $39? Does it mean she's going to spend possibly more than $39? So if her total was at least 39, that means that she could be spending more. So that means that her total of what she's spending, eight per eight cans of soup and plus an additional $15, it can be greater than, like definitely it could be greater than $39. And then we just need to ask ourselves, can it also be equal to 39? Like does at least mean it can be exactly 39? It does. So we would have to put that line underneath that represents or equal to. So just like the arrow kind of looking thing, that's greater than the line underneath is or equal to. So at least is greater than or equal to. Okay, and then now we can go ahead and solve it. So same approach as example one, we want to try to get C by itself. So I want to get rid of this plus 15. I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. I bring down my 8C. 15 minus 15 is 0. Bring down my inequality symbol is greater than or equal to. And then 39 minus 15 is 24. Still trying to get C by itself. Right now there's an 8 that's being multiplied by a C. So to undo multiplication, I divide. 
8 divided by 8, that's just a 1c. And then bring down my inequality symbol, and then 24 divided by 8 is 3. So I've solved it, and then I just kind of want to interpret what that means in the context. So we said that c represents the cost of a can of soup, and we ended up with c is greater than or equal to 3. So we could say a can of soup is at least three dollars so if c is greater than or equal to three it means a can of soup is at least three dollars it can be three dollars or more than it so 13.2 graphing one variable linear, linear inequalities we graph them on a number line we don't use like a full graph with x and y because we only have one variable so we graph them on a number line. There is something called strict inequalities and then non-strict. Strict means that, you know, it's either just less than or just equal to. So you can see right here, like strict inequalities is either just less than, or sorry, I said or equal to. Hold on, reverse. Okay, strict inequalities are just less than or greater than. Just that, this or that, less than or greater than, nothing else. Non-strict inequalities can be less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. I think when I see like when I see the non-strict part, it's like it could be this or that, and it could be like less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. It could be this or that. So it's like non-strict. It could be multiple things. Okay, so starting with strict inequalities, so just less than or greater than. Um, when we graph them, we like kind of draw our point with an open circle. So for anything that's just less than or just greater than, we use an open circle, I'll show you what that means. So where our examples, we're gonna graph X is greater than four. So it's just greater than, it's a strict inequality, it doesn't have that line underneath it. So we draw a number line. And then whatever your number is that x is greater than or less than, um, put that number in the middle of your number line. So ours is 4. So we're just going to put a 4 right here. And then we'll do 5, 6. And then let's just try to put 2 on each side. So if we go down or to the left, it would be 3 and then 2. And then since it's a strict inequality, since it's just like the greater than symbol, that means that we put a circle, open circle, on 4. And then we have to shade or like draw an arrow on the direction that it's covering, that our inequality is covering. So our inequality is x is greater than 4, and it's greater than because the open side goes to the x. So we want to point our arrow towards the numbers that are greater than 4, which would happen on the right. So everywhere to the right is numbers that are greater than 4. So we draw an arrow going that way. And if you want, like, you can do, like, a kind of squiggly line so you can see it better over your number line. It's up to you. You can use different colors, highlighters, whatever you want. But x is greater than 4. And then just pick a number from the area that you, like, shaded to make sure it works. Like, say if I were to check, like, 5 in my head, like, 5 is like greater than four so just you can check it really quickly in your head to make sure it's okay and then for the second line so this is for non-strict inequalities um that means it could be like or equal to so less than or equal to and greater than or equal to when you graph them you draw like over your number with a closed dot so like a filled in circle so our example is x and then this is less than or equal to because the like smaller the below point is going to the x uh negative six so we would draw a number line and then put negative six in the middle of it and then um it's really easy to make a mistake on like number lines when you have your negative numbers so if we're going to the right we're getting bigger and then we're going to the left we're getting smaller so if we're getting bigger, we're getting less negative. So instead of like this being a 7 and an 8, if we're getting less negative, it would be a negative 5 and then a negative 4. And then negative 7, negative 8. And if you find yourself having a hard time with that, 
it could be like really worth your time just to draw like a big number line and do like zero and then one two and so on and then count down negative one negative two and so on and just have that and be able to pull from that big number line even if you just google number line and have it available to help you fill in your like kind of points on your graph okay so now that I have my number line set up, this is a like non-strict inequality, meaning that it's like could be or equal to. So it says or equal to, I use a closed dot. So I go to negative six and I do like a closed dot or like a closed circle, filled in circle, however you wanna phrase it. And then our inequality is X is less than or equal to negative six. So I have to cover all the numbers that are smaller than negative six. So smaller means I go to the left side. Because like negative 7, that's less than negative 6 because it's more negative, and so is negative 8. Okay, so um, one thing, a couple things actually I want to point out is when x is written first in your inequality, so like how x is like first right here and first right here, the point direction of your inequality should match your graph. So like this is going to the right. And so is this. And then this is going to the left. And so is this. That's only the case. Like, only the case if x is first. So for, like, this example down here, it says graph 9 is greater than x. You couldn't use that trick here unless you switch the inequality around. So I'll show you just kind of graphing it as is and then what I mean by, like, switching the inequality around. So we draw our number line, and then we'll do, our number is 9, so we'll do 10, 11, and then 8, and then 7, and then this is a non, or sorry, no, this is a strict inequality because it doesn't have the line under it. So for strict, remember you do the open circle over your number. So we do an open circle over nine. And then this is saying that like, since the like point is going to the X, it's saying that X is smaller than nine. So we would have to cover all the numbers that are smaller than nine. So for smaller than nine, we'd have to go to the left side. So one more time, like if the point, the small side is going to X, that means the X is smaller than this number. It could be any number smaller than. So we would have to go to the left side of nine to get numbers that are smaller, like eight and seven are both smaller than nine. If you're ever like not sure, um, you can just switch the way that this is written. So you can move X to be in the front. You just have to pay attention to which direction the inequality is pointing. So not like pointing left or pointing right, but it's pointing to the X. So when I switch it around, it should still be pointing to the X because my goal isn't to like, change it it's just to basically kind of like mirror it so that the x is written first and then the nine comes second and then now that i've put the x first notice like the trick of you know pointing to the left and pointing to the left on the graph it matches but it wouldn't have matched if i left it how it was originally written okay so 13.3 so write and solve an inequality that represents the following situation. Um, these are just like kind of taking context from these inequalities. So starting right here, a baker sells chocolate chip cookies by the dozen. One day she sold 13 dozen cookies in the morning. When she, when she subtracted that number from the total number of dozens of cookies she'd sold that day, the baker discovered that she sold at least 32 dozen cookies in the afternoon. That's a lot to process. I feel like we'll have to probably read through it a couple times. So, um, let's see. Let's see. I'm just going to go through and start to underline and highlight important information. So, she sold 13, why is not high? Sorry, she sold 13 dozen cookies in the morning and then when she subtracted that number from the total of dozens that day, she discovered that she sold at least 32 dozen cookies in the afternoon. Okay, if you have to like read this problem a few times, I don't blame you. I don't know why, like, I don't know if it's the dozens that's throwing me off, but 
this kind of feels like a weird problem a little bit. It doesn't end up being weird, but like reading it and like trying to digest it feels kind of weird. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that D represents the like total number of dozens she sold. I don't think it says, it's, oh yeah, it does say she, okay, so D is the, like, total number of dozens she sold. So that way, we don't actually have to take into consideration that a dozen is 12, I guess a baker's dozen is 13, so I don't even know what we would count it as here. But we don't have to worry about that if we say D is the total number of dozens because now everything is in terms of dozens. So it says that she sold 13 in the morning, 13 dozen, and then she subtra if she subtracts that number from the total, she ends up with at least 13, 32. So we're taking the total number, which is D, and then we're subtracting the amount that she sold in the morning. So, I mean, I'm highlighting too much. It's getting overwhelming. We're subtracting the amount that she sold in the morning, which was 13. So, sold 13 in the morning, subtracted that number from the total. So, D minus 13. I'm not going to worry about the inequality symbol yet. Something will go here. And then if we take that like total and then subtract the 13 from the morning, we end up with 32. But it's not like an exact 32, it's an at least 32. So that at least tells us kind of what inequality symbol we need to use. So if it's at least, that means that the amount that she got after she subtracted, it can be exactly 32 or it could be more than 32. So that would be a greater than or equal to. Okay, um, I'm going to go through the like word problem one more time and just kind of match up what we just did. So we said D is going to be the total number of dozens that she sold. So they kind of write it in a little bit of a weird order. So not that it's incorrect, but the order of the word problem makes it a little bit hard to match it exactly to an equation. So here it says she sold 13 dozen cookies in the morning when she subtracted that number from the total number. So she took 13 and she subtracted it from the total number. That's the D minus 13. She discovered that she sold at least 32 dozen. So at least 32. Okay, and then now if we want to go ahead and solve it, it's not too bad to solve it. It was just the setup that was a little bit more brutal. So we're trying to get D by itself. So I would have to undo that minus 13. So I'm going to have to add 13 to both sides. And then I bring down the D, negative 13 plus 13, that cancels out, bring down the greater than or equal to, and then 32 plus 13 is 45. So our answer is D is greater than or equal to 45. In the context of the problem, though, remember that D is like how many dozens of cookie cookies? Yeah, sorry, D is how many dozens of cookies that she sold. So this means that she could sell more than 45 dozen or less, or not less, or equal to 45 dozen. So if we're writing this in context, we could say she sold at least 45 dozen. And sometimes, a lot of the time, it's helpful to like kind of take your answer and make sure that it makes sense back in like the original problem itself. So like, let's just say like she sold 45. If she sold 45 and then she took those like 13 dozen and subtracted it, would she have at least 32 left? She would. 
So kind of we can kind of check our work that way. If we do 45 minus 13, we'd be left with at least 32. 